So hello and welcome to another episode of DX Talks, the Digital Leaders Platform. We are really glad this 120th episode to share with you one of our special guests, Mr. Ola Lind. Mr. Ola is the CEO and Director of FTFT Capital. We're going to be seeing more today uh, what is the latest hype in the financial technologies. So we go live every week, so make sure you follow us on the social media and subscribe to get our latest uh, notifications. Finance is really on the verge of technology explosion that will change the world. And finance professionals better get ready because sometimes we see in our experience that they are lacking either the skill or even the strategy in this big gap of explosion and disruption. So the technological disruption is affecting all of the corners of all of the businesses and finance is not an exception. So with that, let's find out what's in store for future of money and finance with our guest, Mr. Ola Lind, to understand more what's happening on the financial technologies aspect. So Mr. Ola, welcome on board of the Digital Leaders platform. My name is Ola Lind. I am originally from Sweden. I'm CEO and director, managing director of FTFT Capital, a subsidiary of the FTFT Nasdaq listed company here in Dubai. And we work in the blockchain and fintech and financial technology sector here. Thank you for that introduction. So let's start now by really, uh, this is where I'll start, explaining the future of fintech. Well, it's uh, happening very quick and uh, we see the future of fintech is going to change a lot of uh, old standard institution. Uh, there is going to be a big collaboration between parties that never happened before, where banks seek uh, fintech uh, new startups and fintech new startups seek big banks because in that field, they need that agile, uh, new development, new technology, and it has to be implemented on a quick basis because the consumer demands it. Due to the post-pandemic and pre-pandemic, uh, a lot of things have changed these last two years, where the demand of digital uh, integration and digital user journeys of uh, making services in the fintech sector specifically, not only for the high-end middle class, but also for the migrant community, has evolved uh, enormously. And uh, we see a lot of new things in the banking sector, specifically in the neo-banking uh, sector, where it's changing uh, globally and it's changing fast how the usage of new technology of the end consumer is actually dictating the services for institution to really change and uh, transform. Yeah. Are we seeing new trends also, as you mentioned now, uh, maybe towards what's happening or maybe in the specifically in, in the fintech? Uh, any, any trends to share with, with the audience uh, where things are really uh, happening here? Well, in, in, the, in the fintech space itself, we see a lot of uh, things happening, especially in collaboration, collaboration between uh, parties. Because uh, today, to develop everything by yourself uh, is painstaking, long process, and a lot of trial and errors. So you're going to see a lot of um, new services in the API uh, part, for example, where you're going to see, and you're already seeing it in many of the applications, super apps and others, where you actually connect through APIs new services very quickly onboarding for clients in both in the money sending sector, in the fintech sector when it comes to e-wallets, because for me that's part of the fintech sector. Yes. And you see, for example, here in the region with Karim, where they are going from being a hail rating app for transport services to becoming a super app and adding on is not the traditional food, beverage, uh, um, and transport, but it's also adding on new financial product and services to the end consumer. 
Yeah, and, I was just adding uh, exactly uh, Karim Pay, if I'm not mistaken. So that was uh, unexpected, but uh, they're you know, becoming super up, as you said. And this is yeah. possibly one of the new trends that really happening in traditional companies now, you know, going all over the place, not just, you know, sticking to their, let's say, Karim, which is just originally a taxi business, and then going on to the food business and going on to, to other uh, really interesting uh, approach. Yeah, and you see also because if you take the whole ecosystem, if you take Karim or you take Grab in Southeast Asia or you take Gojak in Indonesia and so on, they started on that process. They become the super app and they see because they sit on a lot of data from the consumers and they see in immediately which kind of added value products digitally that it will be added on. For example, you see now, and I think Karim is doing the same thing soon, is adding car insurance car uh, or financial services in that space of loans, uh, um, sending money specifically, you can see now in Karim here in this sector, but you can see in another ecosystem like uh, Grab that is in seven, eight Southeast Asian countries where they actually putting more effort into the financial sector part of their application than the traditional rail uh, hailing services because that's a money losing uh, part of their of their business but the financial sector is actually another sector where they can be more profitable for them and uh, a more loyal dedicated space of doing more transaction per user on a monthly basis yeah uh, great uh, so now financial services users have really started doubting the value of that centralized whole model uh, centering around very specific financial institutions and governments. And I think this gave birth to uh, the blockchain technology from Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, creating this whole uh, concept uh, and offer it to the people as a new solution. And now businesses are benefiting. What, 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 do you, what is your take on this? Well, to really see the benefit from it when it comes to decentralization, when it comes to DeFi and, and other services, like Karim, for example, there can be a decentralized service where it will benefit more the driver and the end consumer in the end. But I, I think we are, or Netflix or Amazon or any of these uh, businesses, I think we are a few years still uh, away from that to happen because we're going to need much more bandwidth. We need more, and you can see all the telcos actually entering the same space. And this is the most interesting part. If you look in the African continent, the normal telco business uh, valuation is still laggering. But as soon as they have entering into money sending and, and uh, e-wallet sector, their uh, value has gone crazy because that's really the real golden egg in that sense for them because they're sitting on a customer base like MTN, maybe with 150 million subscribers over the continent, where they can actually utilize that uh, cross-border transaction with a digital wallet and a digital value and money sending, gives uh, many other financial services that they can implement and increase the APRU of each of their customer base that they cannot really do on a telco business that is going the opposite direction where everything becomes cheaper when it comes to uh, data, data services, etc. Great. Uh, and that brings us to, you know, what do you think of blockchain and how blockchain will revolutionize the financial technologies? I think in, in one thing, it's going to be if, uh, cheaper and it's going to be more transparent because you're going to know exactly what's going on. Uh, you're going to be able, when they implement, uh, say, for example, um, with XRP or whatever it is, when you do a cross-border payment, that you can actually follow and see the transaction flow of it because it's uh, uh, published on the blockchain. It cannot be altered with. You're going to see more of that maybe in the financial sector when it comes to deed, asset uh, protection, when it comes to asset loans and other things. Where well, you can actually follow the whole uh, chain of commands when it comes to a transaction. And that's also including NFTs, not NFT as art or a digital uh, commodity for, um, 
for normal part, but it's actually as part of a transaction based uh, ledger. And it also then as an NFT in our case uh, could implement different transactions that happens when you have completed, for example, paid X amount of amount percentage of that uh, loan or whatever, it can then trigger other uh, transaction spot like reporting, etc. for the bank, giving a better credit score to the consumer, etc. So you can utilize this technology in a whole different manner than you could do with a traditional old technology. Yeah. So that brings us more into the fintech. What are the potential uses here that we are talking about? I think you will see a big uh, change in the in the insurance industry. You will see uh, new kind of products and services will be uh, implemented, and they will be in collaboration with these e-wallets and super apps, maybe with Grab. We have a case study, for example, in Bangladesh that is very interesting, where the financial sector, including with the fintech sector and the transport sector, actually makes a transport value, say, for example, each time you go on a, a ride from A to B with Karim, you are insured for that specific uh, ride. So there is created new financial uh, modules and products and services that can be implemented in the fintech sector. And this you're going to see be utilized in the banking industry, in the insurance industry, and so many industries that uh, a new way of thinking and uh, creating new products and services in this sector, but in a micro uh, view and uh, transactions. Great. Uh, uh, a lot of innovation, I think, is happening. So Yeah. <laughs> and that uh, could never happen before because it was too costly. Yes. But now, yes. with this new technology, you can actually cater to the end consumer in a whole new different manner. And you can see that, for example, you take Mashrek Banks, the new digital app, and the new services you see there, and a new holistic way of seeing how you're saving money. Because that was the biggest problem before. You have a bank account, you have maybe the app, you have the money in your account. But now, they actually, in a very nice way, dissect all your transaction and show you in a new way where you're spending your money, how you should maybe uh, allocate a certain percentage, etc. But it's visually uh, presented in a way that an end consumer can better understand their position economically and how they can actually progress and make a better decision or uh, savings and uh, understand better the uh, situation financially that you couldn't do before. Yeah, uh, this is where I think the innovation and technology is advancing. And we're talking about all of those solutions. What are now the challenges in that field? As usual, when you have uh, old monopoly businesses, there is always me, me, me. But you have already seen uh, that that is breaking up, that they see that they cannot handle it themselves because it's so fast for, for example, an old, uh, like old mutual, an old financial institution in Africa, or you take a telecom or you take a bank, the planning process and the execution process of implementing a new service or product is more than a year normally. And in today's world, uh, it's not possible because the consumer demands it in a much faster way. So that's why you're going to see more collaboration. You're going to see investments from banks and financial institutions into this fintech space much, much more because uh, that's a way for them to faster be able to cater to, the, uh, to their consumer base. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, in this question, you already gave us many predictions on the fintech. What is that one prediction that you think it will really uh, rule the world in the, fin in the fintech space, of course? I think uh, the banking industry, the insurance industry, 
uh, have to look uh, out for the telco sector because I think the telco sector have found a new uh, new life in this uh, in this space and. Uh, since they are a very regulated business, they are very uh, they are a very big taxpayer in every country they are. By adding these new products and value services in the fintech space and so on, they really gonna put pressure on the banking industry, the insurance industry, and other industries. So it's gonna be an interesting uh, future because you're gonna see a lot of changes in who is actually. The front runner in this kind of industry. I don't know if you're following uh, KSA, STC, uh, STC as a Saudi telecom yeah. provider where they spend off their company as STC Pay. So that's, as you mentioned, it's a big competition, especially they are governed by the government. So you have one solution which is rolling across the region and across KSA in specific. And imagine STC, they are in Bahrain, they own a telco in Bahrain. Or shareholding in in one of them, and they're probably shareholding in many other uh, countries. Mm -hmm. And you see it with Airtel, you see it with MTN, you see it with Tigo, you see it with all the telcos. That suddenly they can consolidate all the different uh, assets in different countries and actually make value between them and the end consumer. Because we are today a migrating world. We don't stay in one place. We're actually migrating in so many places. Yeah, so you're yeah. going to see these changes and cross-border remittance. They're going to get new challengers. They're going to get, uh, you're going to see a total disruption in so many industries in the coming years to come. Great. Uh, that brings me to my last uh, question, which is, I know there's an event that you will be participating soon on 26th, 27th of June. Uh, Web 3.0 Decode the Global Digital Investment Summit. So, uh, possibly our audience would love to have a chat with you or join you or actually go to the event itself. Uh, would you tell us more about the event and your presentation? Sure. We are a strategic partner with Golf News and Golf News is the one that puts this event uh, together. It will be their first event ever in the Web 3.0. But I think the readers uh, has a demand to understand better, and I think this is one of the most important part, is in this kind of events that is open to the public, is to to actually uh, spread and the knowledge and better understanding what these new technologies will take us in the future and for the end consumer to better understand what we're talking about because so many new terminologies that we do not understand, and it's, I think it's a great entry point to get educated because we're going to live in a new world, not only in the Web 3.0, the new fintech sector, but in the metaverse. And our kids, they understand this very well. But we, as an uh, elderly part of the equation, we do not. And I think this kind of events is important because education is a must and a need in this specific space. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree on that space. Our kids are on a different, possibly on a different planet. Yeah. So. <laughs> so I was talking about, you know, the other day on uh, about metaverse and so on, because this is part of what I do. On, on uh, I'm a, I work on a strategy of uh, crypto and uh, NFTs, and definitely now we're going into the metaverse. And then my kids are playing Roblox, so they are already yeah. there. <laughs> and they're already living in two dimensions yes yes uh, one last word to our audience yeah. and uh, to sum up this uh, lovely uh, interview with you and then uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finalize it from there yeah one last word from your side ah, sorry yeah please uh, join us if you can on the 25th 26th please uh, take a uh, good look into how you are using your bank app today what is missing and from your point of view what is your need in the future because you're going to see that uh, whatever happens now you're going to be part of it because you are the one that is going to use all these technologies and you're going to have a better future in regard to these things because they're going to assist you in so many new ways as a consumer demand so it's not the corporate in like it was in the past that tell you this is the way and services we have. It's going to be from this side now that the consumer will dictate what kind of services and needs that they need to provide for you 
to stay with them as a consumer. So there is a whole new way of uh, how we as a consumer can actually dictate and, and get a better deal from the products and services of the big companies or the companies in this uh, space. So yeah. it's a plus for the consumer, actually, this that was going on. Actually, well said. Uh, and thank you again, uh, Mr. Ola. Uh, you've been a, a lovely guest. Thank you for all the information you. you are sharing. And wish you all the best and good luck. And definitely we'll be talking more soon. Uh, I'll be visiting because uh, I visit uh, Dubai every every month and so so uh, I'll definitely pop up by and then say hi. And then Please for our viewers, uh, thank you uh, again for this lovely lovely uh, episode with our guest. And then see you soon. Don't go away.